Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Is it possible to take a photograph of any particular scene and then claim that it's somehow some kind of proof that we live on a globe or a flat earth? Or even to claim that it disproves or debunks one or the other? I'd say that's a very ludicrous claim to make and it's very unscientific to do so with a single photograph. What we can do, though, is examine all the elements uh, that comprise a scene like this. This was taken on Kamala Beach in Phuket. And look at all the aspects of perspective and examine the issues that we face when we try to convert this into a side-on view of this particular scene. This, of course, is important because uh, we are told to perceive that we live on a globe that's spinning by looking at the sun, moon and stars in the sky and translate that or convert that into this side-on view of us being on a globe. So we take these observations that we make on the earth and then we convert them into this side-on perception or orthographic view of the, the things we see in the sky. But we'll see that we do face many, many issues that result from trying to convert the perspective of the observer into this side-on view. And of course, perspective is something that's completely ignored in uh, the side-on views we are given to perceive ourselves on a spinning globe. It's a view that we've never actually had ourselves, so we can only imagine it. First of all, eye level is not a thing in this photograph because the camera is tilted up looking at the parasailers. The center of the field of view is actually right there uh, where we see uh, the parasailer in the sky. So this is the line of sight. It is not eye level. Eye level would only be if uh, the camera was horizontal or perpendicular uh, to uh, the standing position looking straight across the beach. So we are looking up. We are not looking horizontal. We are we are up from eye level. So eye level isn't a thing here. This here is the line of sight. And this is the center of our field of view. So this is our line of sight. Anywhere else in this photograph cannot be considered a line of sight. And it cannot be considered eye level. We just cannot talk about that when this point here is the focus of the photograph. So, of course, what we have here is a parasailer uh, that's not very far away. And we can kind of uh, judge that they are maybe about as far away as this tree over here. So, about 100 yards from where I was standing when I took the photograph. And uh, so, they are about somewhere between 10 or 20 meters above the beach. We can kind of compare the the size of the people here with the size of the people over here. This person seems to be a lot smaller. Uh, this person seems to be somewhere around the same size. So they're going to. We know that they're going to come down, and that's what they're doing right now in this photograph, uh, somewhere around here between these two people. That's about where they are. So of course they're much closer than this hillside here. But of course we know that that hillside is much, much higher than uh, the people on the parasailer. Uh, but of course, because of perspective, the top of that hill appears to be much lower than our line of sight here. Uh, if you look on Google Earth, this the top of this hill is about two kilometers from where I'm standing. Uh, and uh, there isn't any information about how high this hill actually is but uh, I can assure you it is much, much higher than the 
uh, 10 to 20 meters that we see here for the parasailers or the trees. It just is a lot lower in our field of view because of perspective. The same thing applies to the clouds in the distance which appear to be much much lower than the top of the hill but in reality they are physically much much higher in the sky they're just further away so these are all elements of perspective that we have to take into consideration uh, we can just have a look at uh, what would happen if we put a star in the picture what could we say about a star that we see up here uh, close to the top of our field of view or if uh, we put a star further down here or even further down here and down here what we can say if we if we take into consideration the same aspect of perspective is that the lower the stars appear to be the further away they are so this star that appears low in the field of view might well be as far away as the clouds and then the stars that get higher and higher could be considered as being much much closer so we have this greater angle of elevation above our uh, line of sight just because they're closer it's just uh, something that we would consider as a possibility when we look at how these stars can be observed at their different apparent heights above or below the horizon. Of course, we don't really have a horizon in this photograph. It's just something to think about. Basically, the higher something is in the sky, the closer it is to us. So I'll just take those away. But let's have a look at the issues we face when we try to convert what we see here into a side-on view. So bearing in mind that our line of sight is here. Uh, it's going from the camera tilted up uh, towards uh, the feet of the parasailer. But it's also going over the top of the hill here. Uh, here I've cobbled together a very basic, obviously not to scale, uh, diagram to try and represent uh, this uh, the scene in a side on view and uh, of course what we have here is the observer the parasailer the hills and then the clouds beyond that and at the moment they are in their respective physical heights so uh, the parasailer is somewhere above myself taking the photograph and of course the hillside is a lot taller physically than uh, the parasailer and then the clouds again further away but uh, much much higher than the hills there is no there's no measurements or anything done to this it's just to represent the different actual heights of the thing the elements in the photographs yeah so let's have a look at uh, the line of sight that we had here just quickly go back to the photograph okay so we're talking about this line of sight here right in the center of the field of view with the camera tilted up to look at the bottom of uh, the parasailer uh, and this is about what we get it's slightly off but never mind so what we have is this uh, line of sight that goes just beneath the feet of the parasailer but also clears the top of the hill or the mountain there now that so far that works okay but what about the clouds in the distance if we started adding stars to this uh, image it would just be completely out of whack so not going to even bother doing that but just uh, for example the clouds here again would be much much higher but uh, let's if we draw another line of sight here from the observer to the clouds we can of course see that uh, the the angle of elevation above the observer what would be the observer's eye level so again we're not we don't have an eye level in this photograph but from this uh, side on view we could say that the eye level 
is uh, is is I'll just I'll just draw it in. Okay. Oops. Make that uh, slightly less. Uh, so let's just say that yellow line is the observer's eye level. So the angle at which we see uh, the clouds compared to the angle at which the line of sight is going below the feet of the parasailer and above the top of the hill is of course lower and it comes further down towards the, the eye level. But it is nowhere near the line of sight that we'd have to have to see these clouds off in the distance. They are further away and so the line of sight to them from this position is much, much lower. And we really can't we're going to start having some real issues when we start trying to do that. I mean, uh, if we try to uh, actually represent where the clouds appear to be for the observer, they're somewhere down here, very close to the observer's horizon. Yeah, I'll just go back to the picture. Yeah, they're very low down near the base of the, of the hill there. So if we wanted to try and uh, translate what we are seeing in that photograph just now into this side-on view, we've really got to start moving things around. But of course we know that the clouds are not physically that low. The clouds remain up here. But even this line of sight doesn't do it justice compared to the line of sight that we see here. So these are the issues we face, and of course what we, what we have here is, is a flat surface. We're not even considering that we might be on a curved surface, which would make things even more extreme. So we can see that uh, if, if people rely on just a side-on view like this to, to represent the, the angle of elevation uh, that we might see things in the distance, it simply does not uh, convert effectively or properly, even scientifically, what we actually see in our dome of perspective, as it were. Yeah. So, really, this is it. Just it just highlights the difficulties difficulties that we have uh, in any photograph that we take. Uh, it's not just about our height or our line of sight, but it's about every other element in the photograph and how it relates to us and all the other elements in the photograph. It is near on impossible to convert such a scene into a side-on view with the same... Uh, angles of elevation uh, and these lines of sight uh, into it's just impossible to do so we can do it with one or two objects in the foreground but beyond that everything just uh, dramatically goes much much lower in our field of view as an observer than we can actually represent here so just to kind of emphasize this point about the angles at which we view Polaris, uh, here is an image that is often used to say that uh, um, Polaris on a flat Earth is impossible because we would get this kind of effect. Uh, where is Polaris? Polaris is seen at an at a at a height angle equal to the latitude of the observer. So this is the reality of what we see. If we are at uh, 60 degrees latitude or 30 degrees latitude, then what this what's been done here is uh, a line of sight has been drawn that is 30 degrees at 30 degrees latitude and 60 degrees a line of sight that's 60 degrees above the horizontal at 60 latitude and of course at the equator zero degrees latitude 
um, and and a line of sight that's that's zero. But this is fine. This actually does represent uh, or convert what the observer actually sees. The further away we are from Polaris, the lower in the sky it will appear to be. So it's okay to have uh, this line of sight here for this observer at 60 latitude and this line of sight at 30 latitude for this observer. This does in fact represent uh, what we see in reality and it does represent perspective. And as we've seen before we end up with this curve. If we do all these lines of sight from the different observers at different latitudes then we end up with a curve here rather than a curved Earth as is shown here. And again, pointed out before, according to the Flat Earth debunkers, uh, this kind of illustration is a perfect fit on a spherical Earth. But of course what we have here is these parallel lines of sight to Polaris which, which do not equate to real observations. Yeah? Uh, got a at 60 degrees latitude the person is apparently looking up on the globe 60 degrees from the horizontal line of sight but the thing is it's not 60 degrees from what this observer was seeing it's still the same uh, direction but we don't see uh, the stars in all these different locations this is actually a much better, this is a true representation, this one above, which is apparently supposed to debunk the flat Earth. It's actually a true representation of how we see it due to perspective. The further away we get, the lower the star will appear to be on towards the horizon. But in this one, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever because Polaris is supposed to be here, somewhere above the North Pole, but then for this observer at 60 latitude, they're also looking directly up, parallel to this person at the North Pole. And apparently, that's the direction that they would see Polaris. But then you get to 30 degrees latitude, and this person looks up in the same direction and would see Polaris here. This actually doesn't make sense whatsoever. This does make sense. So just to get back to the original point that a photograph like this with a line of sight, not eye level, uh, uh, like this, is in no way any kind of proof or disproof that we're on a globe or a flat earth. Thank you very much.